Outdoors Maryland is made by MPT to serve all of our diverse communities and is made possible by the generous support of our members. Thank you. Coming up, outdoor adventure goes to the dogs. Good dogs. Getting back to the land, one plot at a time. And masters of the kitchen discovering the Chesapeake. Next. Outdoors Maryland is produced in cooperation with the Maryland Department of Natural Resources, DNR. Inspired by nature, guided by science. Fresh fallen snow blankets the Western Maryland landscape. A popular winter destination, Garrett County boasts an annual average snowfall of 120 inches, nearly twice that of Fairbanks, Alaska. And while many venture here for the winter activities surrounding the lake, a growing number of thrill seekers answer their call of the wild in the nearby surrounding hills. Gee! We run dog teams. Let's go. Anywhere from six. Let's go, guys. To 14 dogs. 63 feet. Linda Lee Herdering's a native Marylander. She and husband Mike run Husky Power dog sledding on 800 acres of parkland near Deep Creek. This has been our dream when Mike retired from the Marine Corps. Hi, puppy. Who wants a loving? We're a dog sledding touring business, and we also teach people how to mush dogs, and we give dog sledding rides. They're here about four hours, no matter what kind of tours, seeing the equipment, meeting the dogs. So we love to share, first of all, and we love to teach. This is Indy, and Indy's one of our team dogs. He's out of that same racing kennel that Colt, Jag, and Charger are from in Indiana. One of today's guest mushers is Josh Broded from Pittsburgh. I really didn't know what to expect. I sort of expected a uh, the wooden classic toboggan sled, you know, the one that you see in, in movies and TV shows. Brad Williams from Baltimore will be teaming up with Josh on today's run. I thought all sleds had rails, and they don't. Um, a lot of these dogs are raced and ran on wheeled sleds. I didn't know that. There's so much more to the sport than a runner's sled. A huge part of mushing is dry land mushing, and it's on wheels. It's not necessarily on dry land. It's um, snow, fluffy snow, mud. Our wheeled sled is actually more fun than a runnered sled. So we bring a lot more dogs with the wheeled sled, and that's exciting. So the musher standing here, which will be you at certain times, and it steers like a bicycle, and it has Breaks like a bicycle. While Linda finishes up with Josh and Brad, Mike and Kara, the apprentice, prepare the dogs for the day's adventure. I know I love you too, bud. Ready to go for a run today? Yeah. We're going. We're going. This is all about the dogs, and uh, you have to be a dog person uh, to do this. To be successful in mushing, you have to become dog. So you have to be able to relate with them. Uh, every, every movement of their body uh, is telling you something. Every vocalization that they do is telling you something, and you have to learn that. So we spend a lot of time with the dogs. Bishop is out of Lance Mackey's kennel in Fairbanks. Lance is the winningest long-distance musher in the world today. So right now, you're looking at one of the greatest long-distance athletes in the world on land. Our dogs get more attention than any pet ever dreamed of getting. So uh, being part of, of the dog family is, is a big part of the business. 
Every one of them has a personality, and you have to learn that personality. Sit! The team is harnessed and hooked to the line as the kennel yard turns from relatively tranquil to all-out chaos. First of all, it starts in the dog yard watching how excited the dogs get. They are extremely bananas. They just love to go. They love their job. They love their work. They run around and scream like crazy, take me, take me. And so watching them being hooked up to the lines is part of the experience. Get another dog! There's two out there. Get Indy! Mike and Kara are ready the last of the team as Linda gives some final instructions to the mushers. You have to be ready to break. So you're watching those dogs, and you're standing here, and you have to squeeze these hard. Here's what's hard about that. You have to let go to go. <laughs> so you have to do, you have to let go and hold on at the same time. That's sort of an oxymoron, let go and hold on. So you've got the brake squeezed, you're holding them, and you, let, you say, ready, hike, ready, hike, and you let go, and they jerk. And so jam your hand in like this. So... You're sort of holding on like, you know, like this. And, and if you're leaning over, you won't be jerked off the back. With the final dogs in place, Mike gives the command. Ready, hop. Hold on. Straight on, guys. We run on 800 acres of county land. We see a lot of scenery. We have wooded trails. We have pastures we go through. We have scenes of the ski slopes. But you know what? None of that matters because we're watching the dogs. We allow guests to yell commands at the dogs. We talk about different skills, like taking the corners wide. Up there, this is their mile-eating pace. They can run 40, 50 miles a day at this pace if it's cold enough. An Iditarod team can run 80 to 90 miles a day. Slow them down. When I tell you to, yell straight on. Now. Straight on! Oh, they're nice and cool today, so they're having a great time. So happy, right? Yep. Well, as you can see, I don't have to make them go. But you have to understand, their thought process is, we're going for a run. Your job, musher, is to hold on. Apparently, that's easier Gee. said than done. As they round the turn, Mike momentarily around. loses his grip, Woo! but makes a Good quick dogs. recovery. They almost threw me off that time. It's more intense than you would think. There's so much torque that these dogs have at their command. I mean, they go from standing still to full speed in an instant. And so you just can really feel their power when you first start going. Easy, whoa. The team stops to check the dogs and change drivers. I'm going to put Josh back on as soon as we get on to Zaza's. It's generally very nasty, whether it's raining and, and sleet and snow or wind and cold. So you got to have a certain amount of adventure in your spirit to uh, want to do this. A lot of people don't appreciate winter, but I, uh, I enjoy it. So I wanted to get out and kind of a different perspective on it. The ride winds down as they travel the trail that leads back home. Bishop? Bishop does not look tired at all. <laughs> While this tour may be coming to an end, the work's just beginning. And the next day, it all starts again. It takes a lot of dedication. This is not a, a nine to five job. It's a 24 hour a day, seven day a week job. We love the dogs and it's about the dogs, but we love sharing the sport. Everyone that comes leaves here saying, wow, I didn't know that. There's such a passion here for what they do. Mm -hmm. You can feel it. The dogs have a passion, the people have a passion. I wasn't expecting that I'd be able to, to steer and to command the dogs. That was a nice surprise. You got to get out there and enjoy Maryland, even in the dead of winter. <laughs>